this is my review of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Okay, so things get sufficiently crazy in this episode. Um, first and foremost, it starts off with Rimuru saying goodbye to his students at the Freedom Academy. Um, and Chloe open ultimately is the one who's most upset, pulling um Rimuru, pulling Rimuru into a hug and and kind of just sobbing her eyes out. Although, and while Ken and while Kenya kind of remarks that she's a cryberry baby, it's clear that the rest of the that the rest of the of the class isn't taking Rimuru's departure well at all either. And Rimuru, and Rimuru, for for whatever reason, he feels like a, a sense in his in his gut, and he decides to give and he decides to give Chloe his, his mask that he got from Shizu. Um, and all and everybody else complains that they didn't get gifts, so he gives everybody new uniforms that Sh that Shuna made. So he gives them all so he gives them all new uniforms and remarks that they he will visit them again. And that when and when they graduate, that they can that um, his town will op welcome them with open arms. And with that, he gets on, on Rango's back and leaves, and encourages them to all continue to work hard at their studies. Um, and on the way back to Tempest, Rango asks what, Rimuru why he gave um, Chloe the Chloe the mask, and he merely remar remarks that he doesn't really know why. He just felt it just felt right, so he gave it to her. Um, and. And Ken and Ranga remarks that that really isn't a conclusive answer, but decides that that's good and that that if it's just felt right, then he's happy with that decision. And they pre pre begin to prepare a teleportation spell to go back to Tempest. But as we know, that's not going to work. Um, any of it. And as they're preparing to take to take a spell, um, Rimuru senses a barrier and asks R Ranga to retreat into his shadow so he can to keep him safe. Um, well, I'll, and then, and then prepares to try and assess the situation to figure out what exactly is going on. Um, and as he's doing that, um, Sui actually shows up as a body double and remark, and tells Rimuru that there's a, that it's a bad situation back at Tempest and that, but although he can only get, get the message out partially before fading. So, and Rimuru quickly realizes that whoever did this is or has orchest also orchestrated an attack on Tempest. And quickly realize, and also realizes that several of his skills have been inhibited, so he's not going to be able to fight at his full strength. Um, and as he's trying to figure out, figure this out, um, he's actually approached by Hinata Sakaguchi, who we met at the very beginning of the episode during the recap episode. Um, we we met her at the very beginning of the season. She we, and this is her first appearance in the actual season proper. Um, at which point she, at which point she decla she declares that she's going to get revenge for Shizu and that she's going to defeat Rimuru. And though Rimuru initially tries to play dumb, he quickly realizes that she that she is referring to him. And and he at, uh, straight up asks her what she what she even wants, and she remarks that she's going to destroy Tempest be, as as revenge. And sure enough, that's basically exactly what happens. Um, so we've so we know that the, uh, we know back at Tempest that um Shuna that. She, that Shion is trying to face off against Shogo, while um, while while Gopta and later Hakaru are facing off against Kyoya, and during the specifically during the fight with uh, with um between Hakaru and Kyoya, um, it's Shuna, Shuna and Gopta realize that um, th they quickly realize that there that there's a barrier around the town that's that's inhibiting monster monster strength and they quickly real and they quickly realize that Hakaru while while skilled as a sword fighter he's not going to be able to hold his own for much longer and sure enough he's eventually cut down by Koya um at which point at which point Gopta tries to run to him but because he's badly injured from his fight that which we didn't see he collapses he collapses and then has his head stomped in by Koya at which point he focuses his attention on Shuna and 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 openly remarks that he's apologizes for breaking Shogo's toy and, and that he'll apologize later or for breaking his toy I, I should put in air quotes um and and goes to attack to attack um Shuna but then Go Gobzo steps in and is attacked and we never see what happens to him but we it's implied that he was killed <laughs> we never see we don't we don't actually see what happens to him he just kind of it just kind of hit the sword um Kyoya's sword just kind of comes down on his head and then it just cuts to black um so we never see him meanwhile Meanwhile, Shuna, Shion is also holding her own against Shogo, but Shogo is quickly, sh and Shogo remarks that he's happy that, um, 
that um, Shion is able to put up a fight even in her weakened state, but he, but Shogo quickly proves to be a lot stronger than Sh than Shion, um, to the point where he, where every time he attacks her, the shockwaves actually go through her and causing her, not which not only causes her pain but also destroys the city behind her, which she's trying to def to defend, and also and also there's a there's a scene in here of um of while Shion is fighting Shogo, um we actually see um. G Gabaru's um, followers. I, I don't actually know their names, and I don't think they were ever actually given names. But they're but they're consoling all all of the children in the village, t telling them that Shion that Shion will be able to take care of it, and that they don't need that they don't need to be as scared as they would be because everything is going to be okay, even though we know it's not. Um, but and sure enough, but sure enough, midway through the fight, um, the the cavalry arrives, as it were, from the in, from the holy from the holy guard, and Shogo just takes that opportunity to to put the plan into action, remarking that Shion attacked him, which isn't true, sort of, but remark, but open, but just openly remarks that um that, that that they're being attacked and they need help. So basically, the basically the basically the kingdom of of Far Fargus actually got what of um. Or at least I believe that's what their name is. But basically, the king basically the king got his got what he wanted, and now he's able to raise. Now he has full per, full full course of action to actually raise the tempest to the ground, and she and Shion is only is just barely able to save a small goblin child from the oncoming uh, enclave before she's able, before she is getting herself to safety, and then it just cuts to the city being on fire. So clearly something is bad is going is happening. It, the, we know it's unclear what actually what's actually happening in the city of Tempest at the moment, but we know it can't be good. Um, at which point, at which point, um, it cuts back to Rimu and Hinata f and the, in their fight, and and Rimu, and Rimu merely asks merely asks her for her name and why she wants to actually kill him. At which point she remark she reveals that she's actually her, who her name is. And that she's trying to get, and that she is does believe kill, that um Rimuru killed she, um Shizu, which is kind of sort of too true technically. And even Rimuru points out that it's a little bit wishful washing. It's a little bit more complicated than that later in the episode. But um he but, but when he finds out who she is, um he tries to appeal to her good nature, appeals to her good nature by remarking that Shizu wanted to help her, and that and that and gave Rimuru that specific task to actually look after her and help her, but. But um, Hinata isn't listening, pointing out that that he that she that all she really cares about is taking is taking down um Shizu's murderer, as she puts it, and then they proceed to battle. And Rimuru quickly realizes that he's at a disadvantage because not only are his skills lim because he already knows his skills are limited and his mobility is limited, um, but in addition to that, he quickly realizes he quickly realizes that his pain nullification isn't working, because every time um Hinata actually hits him with her with her sword, um. And eventually, Great Sage actually fills in the details about why that's not working. Um, as it turns out, the sword is specifically designed to kill people. And as we find out from Sin Hinata herself, the sword is, desi is designed to attack a person's spiritual energy rather than their physical body, and that it Rimuru will eventually die within three hits. Um, at which point, Rimuru really realizes that he needs to act that he needs to start playing more on the defensive. And while and as he's fighting, and he takes subsequently takes more two more hits, realizing that he only has one hit left before he's killed. Um, tries to remo tries to explain the situation of, about who he is and what his and what his goals are. Um, remarking that he is an otherworlder and that he is was a Japanese reincarnation and that he's and that he's and that he knows she is Japanese as well. Um, but but he not merely remarks that her informant told her told her that he would claim to be Japanese, but he but that um, Rimuru can disregard those claims now, pointing out that it won't actually save him. At which point Rimuru realizes that whoever um hit. Hinata's informant is knows he's Japanese, knows he's another worlder, and felt her lie specifically so that she would attack him. Um, at which point, at which and which point, Rimuru continue, continues to fight against her and tries to explain to explain that he's not that he doesn't really want to fight her and that she and that they can work some work something out. But but as Hinata is only really obsessed with killing Rimuru and getting her revenge against him, he realizes that there's that there's no real no real will and that. And she eventually remarks that he's she's surprised that he was able to hold up this long, but that it, it will eventually end. At which point, Rimu finally reveals that he knows about her abilities, um, and knows about her sword's ability to take people down. And sh sure enough, she remarks that her that the skill imbued in her sword will kill people with in exactly seven hits. So, 
Yeah, Rimu, so yeah, Re she basically confirms what Rimu was thinking, that it'll kill anybody who gets st struck within seven hits, and that if they're not careful, they will eventually die. So, so, bas so basically, Rimu ha has very little chance of actually defending himself. Um, at which point he decides to use a, use one of his other skills to actually unleash Ifrit and have him join the battle and sh maybe try and tie things up, but that doesn't work, and and eventually, and as Ifrit is, atta is attacking, Rimuru notices that something is wrong with him and, it and withdraws him. At which point, at which point, Great Sage fills him in about the fact that um, apparently that um, Hinata used her unique skill to try and absorb Ifrit and take his abilities, and that. And that's what caused him physical pain, but the but the fact of the matter remains is that Rimu and and Ifrit are bound are bound by a spiritual link, and that Ifrit can't act, can't actually have his skills taken because he's directly connected to Rimu, and she, and Rimu quickly realizes that quickly realizes this and confesses that he's figured out her secret skill and and outright asks her if she tried to steal Ifrit, um and she's a little bit surprised that he knows about her unique skill, but decides it doesn't matter since he's going to kill her in going to kill him anyway, and remarks that his, her unique skill is Usurper, which does exactly what it says. It steals somebody's skills. And and he real, and Rimuru realizes that that's very similar to his own skill, Gluttony, and then realizes that he has one la that he has one last ace of his sleeve after realizing that he has the skill Gluttony. So he, reali so he realizes that he has one last chance to actually defeat, to defeat her. And remarks that he's going, that he's no, that he can no longer afford to keep keep wasting time. So he's going to use his final last ditch attack. Um, and and Hinata is a little bit surprised that he's going to be going with that route, but he does, but remarks that it doesn't really matter since she's going to kill him either way. Um, at which point, at which point, Rimuru activates Gluttony as Hinata runs him through. So it's a so yeah, this episode. So yeah, basically. It's never in, so yeah. Basically, this episode just gets a whole b bunch of nuts. So we meet Hanat. We finally meet Hanat personally. She reveals a bit more about her backstory, about how she's not about how about her rank, and I, she's apparently not only a member of the early church but a member of the Imperial Guard, and that she met, she came to she came to fight Rimuru because she believes that Rimuru killed her, killed Shizu, i.e. the only person she really cares about, which is technically true, at least according to Rimuru, pointing out that. That while she, that while he did defeat Ifrit, which is what when and basically caused Shizu to die, um, he he she the detail she remarks that the, and she remarks that the details doesn't matter. It's not that's not exactly true. He defeated Ifrit to he killed defeated Ifrit and absorbed it to in order to keep she to keep it from going out of control and keep it restrained as it were. Um, but in the process, Shizu no longer had us has a superior spirit bound to her and died as a result. So, technically speaking, Rimuru killed her, but technically speaking, he didn't. It's a little bit wishy-washy. It's a little bit... That's not exactly clear-cut. But, but in case things do get a little bit nuts, because not only is the City of Tempest on fire, as we established, um, but... But now Rimuru has to face off against somebody who personally wants him dead, and also, it's implied... It's ambiguous as to whether or not he actually did die in the fight because he activated gluttony as she was he was being run through by her sword which as we know will kill will kill him in seven hits and that was the final one so it's ambiguous as to what's going to happen next because now temp now tempest is on fire it's everything is bad and also rimuru may or may not be dead depending and i am assuming not because there's still more of the series left to go but and he's kind of the main protagonist so he can't really die but but it's, but it's going to be a little bit up in the air as to how the T Tempest is going to recover and if Rimuru is going to be able to defeat Hinata. So it's got so that's going to be interesting to see going forward. But in any case, that's my review of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. What did you guys think? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over on my Discord server. Link in the description. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter in the description below. And also, if you want to help support the show, then be sure to check out my Patreon. It's only a couple bucks a month, and you get a cup and you get a bunch of cool perks that are my way saying thanks. So be sure to check those out in the description below as well and help support the show because it helps me make videos. And you guys, and if you guys want to like, want to continue seeing me make videos, then a Patreon, then my Patreon is the best way to do that. Also, if you want to watch more videos from me, then be sure to check out the sidebar or the annotations on the end screen. The sidebar will recommend videos based on what you've already, based on think, what you like. And the end screen will recommend videos based on, also based on what you like, but also whatever my most recent video is, based on your viewing history and all that. But 
And by any case, check those out and if you want to see more content from me. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!